Okay, I'm going to move into finding the area between a complex region. Okay, so for this one, if you look at the sketch that's given to us, you'll notice that we have um, the area kind of looks like a triangle, and there really looks like two main areas here that I can split it up into. I'm going to use between 0 and 1, right, between 0 and 1, which is just the integral of the orange one, where x squared, and then between 1 and 2 is just the blue line and the, and the x-axis, which is 2 minus x. So to find this area, I'm going to do two integrals. I'm going to do the first one, which is between 0 and 1 of x squared dx plus the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 minus x dx. All right, so it's kind of like two different uh, pieces to solve. So we know this one, the antiderivative here, is going to be 1 third x cubed evaluated at 1 and 0. So we find that real quick. So f of 1 minus f of 0, that's going to be 1 third minus 0, or 1 third. Okay, this one, this antiderivative is going to be, let's see, that's 2x, and then this is going to be minus one-half x squared, okay? And that's going to be evaluated at 2 and 1. So we're going to do f of 2 minus f of 1. So let's see, 2 times 2 minus 1 half times 2 squared, whatever that is, minus 2 times 1 minus 1 half times 1 squared. Okay, so that's 4, the first part, 2 squared is 4, half 4 is 2, 4 minus 2 is 2, minus, that's going to be a half, 2 minus a half is going to be 1.5. Let's keep it as fractions, so 3 halves. Okay, so when I subtract that, I'm going to have 4 halves minus 3 halves, which is 1 half. So it ends up giving me 1 third plus 1 half, which is going to be, let's see, that's going to be 2 six plus 3 six, which is 5 six squared units. All right, so that is it for the area between um, these kind of two curves, but also you can see it's kind of really like split into two separate integrals, okay? Now, the very last thing we're going to do, which you are going to see on the AP exam, is that there's another way to do this kind of problem, right? So this problem, which I'll show you on Desmos, a little bit easier to see, is you can actually, instead of doing the process we just did, you could actually integrate with respect to the other variable y. Okay, so this is kind of how we, the process that we do it. Um, and I'm going to go to Desmos to kind of see if your brain can kind of rotate it and so you can visualize what I'm talking about. So I'm going to graph x squared and then I'm going to graph 2 minus x. So I'm going to graph x squared and then 2 minus x. All right, let me change back to out of radians. All right. Now, so what we just did was we found this area right here, okay? But if you just look at um, taking this and kind of rotating it where now this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis, you should be able to see that this x-axis and this point where they intersect 1, 1, we have the area right here where one is above the other, okay? So the red one above the black one. So essentially what I'm going to do to solve this uh, by integrating with respect to y is I'm going to take each of my equations, write them in terms of y, and then do the same process we did in terms of the very first problem. Okay, so here's my first step. My first step is to take y equals x squared and then y equals, was it 2 minus x? Yes. And write them in terms of... Um, x by itself. So I'm going to solve for x by taking the square root. So we have the square root of y equals x. You'll notice I did not do plus or minus because when you look at the sketch, I only really care about the positive part there. All right, so I didn't just ignore it, um, but I thought I don't actually need it. Then this one is going to be, let's see, move the x over. It becomes x equals, and then this becomes 2 minus y. All right, and so to do my integral with respect to y, I'm actually going to use 0 to 1 as opposed to what I used before, which was 0 to 2, because, again, I'll try to explain it in the sketch. 
But if you were to look, kind of rotate it, right, where this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, we're only going up to one here where they intersect. So that's why I'm using zero to one, okay? And I'm gonna use the red one, which is two minus x, is above the one in black. So I'm gonna do of two minus y minus the square root of y. Okay, now I'm gonna find my antiderivative here, which is going to be two y minus one half y squared. And then remember the square root of y is actually the same as y to the one half power. So this is y to the three halves power times two thirds in front and I'm subtracting. And I'm gonna evaluate that at one and zero. So f of one minus f of zero. Feel free to go to decimals if you want. I'm gonna do the, the algebra here. So two times one minus one half times one squared minus two thirds times one to the three halves power. So all of that minus two times zero minus one half times zero squared minus two thirds times zero to the three halves power. Again, you'll probably notice that all of that's gonna become zero. So just focusing on essentially f of one. So that's two minus a half, and then that's gonna be minus two thirds. Let's get a common denominator, which is six. So that's gonna be 12 sixth minus three sixth minus four sixth. 12 minus three is nine, nine minus four is five. So you get five sixth squared units. Shouldn't be surprised by that answer since we actually, this was essentially the same problem, just completed in a different way by integrating with respect to the other variable y. Okay, so anyway, uh, hopefully you'll see in um, you know a few weeks how we're going to do that in terms of questions on the AP exam. Good luck on the homework.